Have I ever introduced y'all to my dogs? Most of you have probably seen them running around the background of my videos. But this is Totem. He's the smart one of the bunch. <laughs> Good boy. This is Luke. He is the one that likes to play. Ready? Go. And this is Rooster. She isn't too bright, but she is the biggest love bug around. When the dogs aren't hanging out with me in the shop, they are on this wraparound porch, which is great because it keeps them out of the rain, there's plenty of shade, and there's always a breeze. In the summer, it's wonderful, but in the winter, it is difficult for them to get out of the wind and stay warm. So this week, I built them this dog house that is big enough for all three of them to fit inside. It's insulated, and the roof is an access panel to the inside. Let me show you how I built it. This will be an insulated dog house. So instead of going with my first instinct, which was a plywood body, I went with a more of a framing design made from two by fours ripped in half. I first sent the two by fours through my table saw to take off the rounded edges on both sides, then readjusted the fence and cut them directly in half. After getting them cut to width, I cut everything to length at the miter saw. I started by constructing what will be the two sides, coming up a few inches in a few places to give the house some small feet to get up off the ground. Again, mine will be under a covered porch and should be kept dry, but you know, just in case. I'll be using pocket holes to join things together and I'm very excited to introduce a new jig to hit the market that has some really great features on it. So on a traditional pocket hole jig, you have three things to adjust, the drill block, the clamping tension, and the drill bit collar. On this jig, all of those things are self-adjusting, so all you have to do is stick in your material. If you want to go from one and a half inch material to three quarters of an inch, you just clamp the new material into place and you can see everything automatically adjusts for you. You can use the onboard Allen key to tighten down on the drill bit collar, then you're ready to go. Of course, if you want to double check, there is an indication marking on the side and they're even color coordinated to the length of screw you need for that thickness of material. It's pretty sweet if you ask me. After getting the pocket holes drilled, I started attaching things. Even though this house shouldn't ever see moisture, it will be outside, so I went ahead and used Type on 3 since it's a waterproof glue. After getting one side assembled, I repeated the process to create another. Next I started working on the front panel, first cutting everything to size, drilling in pocket holes, then gluing and screwing it in place. This design is very easy to adjust depending on your size of dog that you're building it for. Since I have three and they're all like to snuggle up together, I made this one long enough to fit all of their beds, but also give them room to get around one another. After getting the door in place, I thought I should double check they could comfortably fit. Good boy. Okay, that fits. All right, go on, a little bit, come here. Come here, come here, no, no, no. You have to go through the door. Uh, uh, come on, give me a baby girl. Let's see, yeah, go on. Go on. <laughs> okay, good. You both fit. Okay, with that test passed, I moved on to attaching the back panel, moving things to the floor to have more working room. Next up was the floor, but before putting in the decking material, I threw in some insulation. This comes in big four by eight sheets and is only three quarters of an inch thick. Since my framing is one and a half inches thick, I cut two panels per opening and doubled up to fill up the cavity. I would use a straight edge and a box blade or my pocket knife to cut it out and then stick it in place. Once the bottom was full, I measured and cut some plywood to deck it. I ended up cutting this piece in half to make it getting into place a little bit easier. And I just made sure to cut it in the center so that I could join the seam to the floor joist. And now more insulation for the walls. To make this step easier, I would cheat and set the panel directly on top of the foam, then just trace the shape I was needing. While I'm working on that, let me thank this video's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an outstanding online learning platform that has classes put together on just about every subject you can imagine. If you're looking for an educational gift to give somebody for the holiday season, then consider an annual subscription to Skillshare, which is less than $10 a month. This will allow them to custom pick subjects of their choice to dive deep into since Skillshare has over 25,000 classes. If you're among the first 500 people to click the link in the description and use my code at checkout, you'll get your first two months of Skillshare for free. 
I'm personally taking a class right now on learning Fusion 360, which is a 3D modeling software. 3D modeling drastically streamlines the planning process of a project. So I 100% recommend investing the time to learn one of the softwares out there. Again, 500 people will get their first two months of Skillshare for free by using the link below and my code at checkout. The setting in place and tracing method worked so well, I next repeated it for siding. For the siding, I'm going with B-Board. This stuff is a huge pain to paint, but it does give it some good texture and is very lightweight, only being 3 eighths of an inch thick. As you can see, I dragged the full sheet over to my work area, then just flipped the house around in order to trace all of the sides. If you do this, of course, just make sure horizontal reference is squared up to the beadboard so that your panel doesn't come out wonky looking. After getting the sides traced, I used my track saw to cut all the shapes out and then tight bond three and brad nails to stick it in place. I started by attaching the two side panels so that when I cut and attached the front and back panels, the edges of the sides would be covered up with these. On the front panel, I went ahead and covered up the opening to the doghouse with the beadboard. But after getting it secured in place, I used a large drill bit to punch a hole through. Then I used a router and a flush trim bit to perfectly cut out the opening. All right, now moving on to the roof. Since the dog opening is much smaller than me, I wanted to make the roof an access panel to the inside. So I decided to make it hinge. I decided to use the leftover beadboard I had from the siding to create this roof and also decided to split it into two doors instead of just a single. This is fine for mine since it will live under a covered porch, but if you plan to place your house where it could get rained on, then keep it as a single panel so rain can't drip through the seam. Before attaching things, I set the roof panels aside and gave everything a coat of paint. I would first use a roller to get all of the flat surfaces, but then use a brush to get in all of the valleys. Looking back on it, I should have used my sprayer, and that definitely would have saved me a lot of time, but oh well. For the body, I'm going with a gray, and while it was drying, I also grabbed what will be the trim boards and threw a coat of paint onto them as well to be drying. Instead of white, I'm going with a light gray. While those are drying, I started attaching the roof panels. I started by centering and squaring up the panels to the body. Once I had it just so, I used a pencil to trace the underside of the panels. And this line indicates the outside of the body, but since I want to also insulate the roof, I needed to know where the inside of the body fell on these sheets. With the framing being one and a half inches thick, I grabbed something that was two inches thick, just happened to be this level, and used it to mark the inside line I needed. Now that I had this reference, I could measure the area inside, cut a piece of foam insulation to size, and then attach the panels. For this, I'm using a multi-surface glued made by Tight Bond called Thick and Quick. And since I couldn't use brad nails to hold it in place while it dried, I just grabbed an assortment of tools and weighted it down for a bit. While that's setting up to dry, I started working on the trim. I ripped down my one by boards I had painted earlier, then started cutting them to length and attaching them. Glue doesn't stick very well to painted surfaces, so learn from my mistake and leave the top edge of your body unpainted to give you a clean surface to glue to. I'm again starting on the edges of the house so that the front and back trim will cover up the end grain of the side trim. I also always cheat on trim. Instead of measuring and cutting, I typically just hold the board in place and mark the back side. It's quick and it comes out perfect every time. Alrighty, by this time the insulation was well past stuck in place. So I first attached a portion of piano hinge to the underside, then crawled inside the house and attached it to the body. Oh yeah. Okay. And I should have seen it coming, but to be honest, I didn't think about it when I was working on the design. But the door actually has a built-in stop with the overhang on the back end. So, that's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> I planned that. Okay. That works nicely. Alright, after getting one secured, I repeated on the second. I used the tongue and groove feature of the beadboard to make the seam in the middle disappear. This is great, except for whenever I try to lift up one without the other, it was running into the other and prevented it. To fix this issue, I grabbed my multi-tool and just notched out a small portion in the back so that I could open one and give it clearance to pass up the other. And there we go. Now it's working correctly. Next, I did all of the finished painting to the inside, the underside of the roof, and any other exposed wood. 
So when I was trimming around the door, I left the top piece of trim long so that I could hang something cute and special. I used my CNC machine to cut out a little paw print and instead of just gluing this to the side, I instead added a small hook to the overhung trim and also the pole so that it could hang and there would be a slight swing to it. <laughs> At this point, I actually thought I was done, but the roof was really bothering me with how thin it looked compared to everything else. So I ended up ripping some half inch plywood and adding a small strip around the perimeter of the underside of the roof. And this just bulks up the look some and I think it makes it look better. I placed it so that it wouldn't interfere with the trim of the body. And to attach it, I just laid down a bead of glue and clamped it in place until it was dry. Now the pups have a place. They can all three crawl inside to get out of the wind that's always present on our hill. They can all be together, which will make them happy, but still have room to get around one another. Also, I have a way to peek in and make sure they aren't staying up late and ordering pizza. <laughs> A few followers on Instagram were telling me that their dogs would definitely tear into the insulation if it were left exposed. Fortunately, my dogs don't chew or scratch things up, so I don't think that this will be an issue. But if yours do, then I certainly recommend using a thin layer of sheeting in order to hide that insulation from them. That's it for this one. I'll see you on my next one.